Hello, good morning, happy Tuesday, happy October 1st. Uh, welcome to our weekly Tuesday Leadership Zoom. I'm so very excited to interview Jason Jorgensen today. Um, if you have not met him, he is, and I'm always going to get this wrong, VP of Build Integrations, is that right? Uh, VP Strategy of and Strategy growth. and Growth. <laughs> That's uh, Cliff's That's title. Cliff. Build I integrate. can't keep him straight. <laughs> I, I I just changed my name, so it, there it is. Okay, v, VP of Strategy and Growth. And that's perfect because we would love some insight on strategy and growth this month. So I'm going to kind of just kick it open saying, one, I'm so proud of all of you for closing your month strong. Um, several of you did the September to Remember Boot Camp. I want you to clap, give yourself a pat on the back, do a hurrah, whatever, because um, one, even if you only got through one video, you did something, right? And if you're doing nothing, then your business is going to show nothing. But if you're doing something, something to move the needle. So I would encourage you, if you weren't in the September to Remember group, or if you just didn't get through all the videos, go back. They're in there. Go back and rewatch them. I actually have a group that several of them this morning, they're like, I'm st I've am i already started my October 1st, starting over the September videos. And I'm like, that's freaking awesome. And it's kind of challenging me. <laughs> so, so I'm going to um, do the same because what I learned, I've been here 10 and a half years, right? But what I learned from those videos from other leaders that are crushing it in this industry, whether they've been here with us for 10 years or whether they've been here two years, I was learning something new or relearning something that maybe I used to do and kind of just forgot about. Um, so I definitely encourage you to dig in, watch the videos. We've set up where there's files in there of the different um, leaders, the the printables, the worksheets, the scripts, how they reach out on birthdays, all the different things, right? I will also encourage you something that has stood out to me is it is always, always, always going to be about adding to your network, whether you, you feel like, oh, I have a ton of people or, oh, all my people know I thrive and all my people, nobody wants to thrive with me. I want to share something with y'all. Um, and I, I, I don't know if this is across the board for everybody, but we are in a weird time. Okay. We just are. And you've heard me talk about how my husband and I went through this um, back in the last economy fall. Um, I don't know when that was 2000 something, but it was a struggle. We both owned our own businesses and it was a, it was a really, really hard struggling time um, because hair and swimming pools, people, if they've got to cut bills, they're going to cut that or they're going to start doing things themselves or they're going to slow it up. So it was a very hard time for us, but we came back from it. Um, we continue to meet people during that time. And so adding to your network, right? So yesterday, my oldest son, his car broke down freaking on the other side of Dallas, which if you know Fort Worth compared to Dallas, it's a good hour plus haul in the middle of rush hour traffic. Um, so we had to go, we go pick up his car. We go drop it at the Ford dealership. Well, my husband is friends with the sales manager and they were talking last night and he said, he was like, this was the worst end of month ever. He said this, he's like, I've been in the car industry for decades. I've never seen an end of month like this. And honestly, I don't say that to make you be like, oh, well, even car dealerships are having a hard month. I'm letting you know <laughs> that it's a weird time. And I'll, while I didn't want somebody else to, to have bad sales, it kind of was encouraging that it's not just in direct sales. It's, it, it's just across the board. And so that to me was, was a good reminder, right? So like if you hear people saying, oh, it's just your company or it's just your business model, they're full of baloney. So um, just remember where you are, where you're at, what we have our hands on, and then this GLP-1 thing, <laughs> which um, I know several companies are, are launching different ones. And I'm just like, I can't wait for ours. I can't wait for ours. So we'll know more about that tonight. All right. That's enough for me. Jason, um, I would love to share just you kind of share 
what's on your mind October 1st, kicking off fall, last 90 days of the year. We've got GLP-1, whatever coming. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, I'll just kind of shoot from the hip a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yesterday uh, morning, I was talking to Jason Camper, talking with him. We we're talking about, hey, what do we need to do to, you know, st strategically and growth-wise, uh, the two areas that I'm, uh, I've been asked to focus on, and as we talked through things, um, you know, we obviously talked about uh, the launch of this product that's going to be announced tonight. Um, you know, we talked about what do we need to do for uh, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter starts today, right? It's the last quarter of the month. Traditionally, for network marketing, uh, that's one of the bigger quarters. It, it's if it's not the very biggest, it's the second, right? It'll it'll uh, bump heads with quarter number one. Um, I've seen that for at least twenty years as an executive in different companies, and so um, it's it's time to really. Um, you know, buckle down and start working and start uh, moving the needle. The other thing that we talked about, um, we talked about the importance of the DFT. And last night I was on a Zoom and I shared uh, with a different team and I shared some components of, you know, what makes, what makes Thrive unique? What was, what was one of the, I, one of the, things that I saw when I became uh, a thriver, if you will, and I was, you know, vetting the company, it was the DFT. I looked at the DFT and, and at first I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool because I uh, just came from a company and we had a, a patch. It was a pain patch. And that was a big deal. Uh, tens and tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in global sales. So I was like, this is really cool that they have this technology that they're blending with the nutrition and the weight suppressant, right? I, I'm like, this is really cool because it, it's with you all day long. One of the biggest problems in um, the weight management industry and in nutrition, the nutrition industry in general, is the ability to continuously um, drip um, nutrition into the body and continuously drip, um, you know, a thermogenic weight, you know, anything that's going to drive uh, down the appetite, right? So, First and foremost, we have a product right there that absolutely is the very best marketing tool. Um, very few companies have a product that will pique people's interest. Like I, I, I can't think of another company that has definitely something this cool. So what I want you to really focus on and, and, um, Myself, Cliff, Jason, we've sent out uh, texts to a lot of the team leaders, a lot of the um, people that we feel like will share it with their team that will disseminate this. And, and what we want to do, you know, rather than maybe the exact same message, um, take that message and um, continue to use that message, but change it around, change it around with a different picture, change it around with some different wording, but we need to be, we need to absolutely be utilizing the DFT. Now you're going to find out more about the, the GLP one pro product, uh, later today. Um, but I, I'm telling, I'm here to tell you the DFT delivery system is bar none the very the very best um, way to actually continuously drip uh, the nutrients and the the things that we need? So I'm not going to tell you anything more than that about the product, the delivery mechanism, other than um, whether you choose to promote the the GLP one 
product or stick with the Thrive One, Two, Three, or both or whatever, the DFT needs to absolutely be center in your marketing and sales. Like everything that you do, everywhere you go, don't leave your house without having your DFT in a visible place. Just don't do it. it you, you're you're hurting yourself. You're hurting your own uh, business. Um, the other thing that I want to briefly touch on is business 101, right? So often we, we get caught up in um, overthinking our business or just managing our business, right? We, we get to a point, the money's coming in where we can't believe it. You know, we're like, oh, this is better than the day job. You know, for Amber, it's better than cutting hair. Um, maybe not all the time, but most of the time, right, Amber? Anyway, so it's it's you you we get in a comfort zone, and the problem with that is we start to manage our business, right? We we, we don't want to manage our business; we want to grow our business, and so you have to get out of the mindset of managing the business. The second thing that you need to do. Right. I'm just going to give you a couple of things not to do and a couple of things to do. But the other thing that you need to make sure that you're not doing is wasting time with the wrong people. Um, so often, as especially as as bigger leaders, uh, you guys all have teams. You guys are all, um, you know, out there hustling. You have the skill set to build a team. Don't waste your time on people that don't want to run. Um, but also, you know, don't just write someone off on the first try. I, I mean, if, if you have, if, if you have the inclination that that person could be really good, touch base with them every, you know, once a month or something, but write a list of those people and, and circle back, but don't waste uh, time on those that are the wrong people. So that, that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, a couple of things that I do want you to do, and if you've heard me talk about this, I talked about it on a call last week, and I've talked it on, about it on at least a half a dozen different Zooms, is I want you to take a piece of paper, and I want you to write FIND, F-I-N-D, and I want you to put that on your refrigerator, because I know everyone has a refrigerator and everyone will open it at some point. So make sure that you just put it on there. And um, let's talk a little bit about find. Uh, some of the synonyms for the word find are discover, learn. Uh, you know, you, you can go through a litany of different um, words. I, I think if you actually look it up, there's probably eight maybe maybe even 10 get determine i wrote a few of them down locate um those are all really good terms and and they have some of them have different meanings right like get and learn are obviously very different but what i want you to do is i want you to write down under the word find number 1 number 2 and number 3 and I, I'll bet you most of you think I the first thing I'm going to say is find people to enroll. But that's actually number three. So I want you to find people to sponsor customers and promoters. And that's number three. And, and these are priorities, right? Um, the number one thing that I need you to find every day is your purpose. Right. Your purpose is going to change. If you have children, you're going to you, you know that your purpose is a little bit different. Um, if you have a job, if you have, um, you know, just different um, obligations, then your purpose can can change. And, um, you know, one of the one of the people that are on this call, um, I've talked with her um and she she's always on the top of the boards with customer acquisitions. And, um, you know, and she told me that 
when she was about 65, she found Thrive and, and she found herself again. And that was one of the very best definitions of purpose that I think I've ever heard. I, 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 I was like, you know what, that's awesome. Because, you know, whether she's doing this for the money or not, I, I, I don't think that's the case. I think she's doing it for herself, right? So her purpose might be different than somebody that might be 35 and they're trying to make a car payment and they're trying to put food on the table, right? So the purpose is different. I want you to define your purpose every day and you have to find it. Um, the number two, and this is this might be one of the most important things that you uh, find, and this is really close to number one, and it's confidence. You need to find your confidence. And if that if that requires you to go back in your mind to a time in your life where you were confident, you need to do that. If it, if it were high school, if it was when you were a kid, if it was when you were a new mother, if, if it's when you were a 200K and your business was just rocking and your confidence was also rocking, you need to go back to that and you need to find that uh, confidence and you need to do it every day. Um, you've also heard me say this, the two most important things for success in this industry is one mindset and two duplication. And confidence ties in with mindset very much. Um, in fact, I believe that those two can be sequential. When you have confidence, your mindset will follow and vice versa. If you establish your mindset as I will do and I will succeed, your confidence will also follow. So those are the three things that I want you to focus on. It's just the word find. Everywhere you go, I want you to think of the word find. It's a four letter F word, right? Not the wrong F word. This is the right F word. Okay. This is what we're going to focus on. Finding people, but finding yourself first. Okay. So business 101, make sure that you're operating from that perspective every day. And then the very best thing that you can do to manage a profitable business is not worry about the expense side of the business. That's the defensive side. You want to worry about the offensive side of the business. This is a, a very offensive driven business. And so everywhere you go, everything that you do on social media, neighbors, whatever it is, friends, you need to find a way to pique people's interest. Absolutely. Number one priority and we are going to have a phenomenal uh, product launch here. But what can we do to prepare for that product launch? The best thing that we can do is what we're doing right now. Bringing people to the table, bringing people to the opportunity call on Thursday night. And inviting people to be a part of Thrive. And make sure that you're putting your best self out there, right? Um before, if someone's selling me a product, I'm the, the first thing I'm going to do is look at that person and go, well, are they taking this product, right? Unless it's a medication or something from a doctor, that would be the exception to the rule. But you need to be your very best self. And once again, there's the DFT, right? If you're asking somebody to try a DFT and you don't have one on, they're going to be like, Whoa, pump the brakes here, right? So make sure that you're putting yourself in a place where you will absolutely be, you know, a marketing billboard. Um, all right, so wh what, what can I do every day to be more effective? Um, I think if you're not planning your day, you're not planning your business, right? You are, you might be able to wing it one day here and there, but if you're not laying a plan out every day and doing just what Amber's doing right now, writing things down, then you're, um, you're kidding yourself, right? You're, you're not going to be able to one manage customers 
um, two, enroll people, three, um, a lot time to do the right things, right? I This business should damn well better be not your first priority, right? This business should be priority, uh, you know, maybe two or three. Um, if this is your income, then it probably should be number two, uh, right behind your family and, and you know, other um, obligations and responsibilities that are linked to that. And so that makes it a big priority. And so in order to be the most effective, you, you've got to allocate your time wisely. Like you can't just willy nilly it and go, well, today, all right, I'm going to jump on social media and, you know, and, and you're doing this all day long, right? Like if, if you're doing this all day long, your business is uh, suffering. I think doing some of that is important, but take 15 minutes of your day, preferably in the morning, write down your actionable items, use the A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C, so on system. So changing the brakes in the car or changing the oil, okay, is not an A1. If, if you're child cuts themselves and they need to go to the emergency room that is an a1 right and so sometimes things take precedence that just all of a sudden creep up on us but things that revolve around your business should absolutely be on the a list of things to do and sometimes that a list gets um overwhelming right but um, you're the boss of your business. You're the one that needs to make the decision of what's the priority here. Um, and so I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'm just I'm just going to say uh, use the Franklin Covey system. Work it works for me. I I work there, so I I was kind of trained in it. But that's really all it is. Write down your list of a. One, two, three, four, five, B, C, D, however many you want to go. But um, a lot of these at the end of the day, you're either going to be able to go through and check them off and say that's been completed. And if it has, you know, don't add it to the next day's list. If it has not, then that's going to fall in to the next day. But on this list, and I'm talking business specific, okay, you need to have prospecting on there you need to have follow-up on there you need to have social media posts on there and you need to put yourself in a position every day to go somewhere even even if you're going to drive to the store and pretend to shop and put some things in the cart and buy things that you bought the day before um you know, in the gas station or whatever else, do it. Like when, when you think back to the people and that your own experience, where was it that you came across some of your very best leaders, right? Not a, a lot of times it's your um, circle of influence. It's, it's people that, you know, uh, people maybe that you meet, um, at your kid's soccer game or whatever, but so often there are people in our work environment or in our daily life that we cross paths with and they watch you, right? They're, they're like, what makes that person so happy? Oh, I've noticed they've lost 30 pounds or 50 pounds. What is it that they're doing, right? So you, you need to put yourself out there. Um, I, I've told two or three people, um, I don't think I told Amber this, but I told somebody else this that um, used to cut hair. I said, you need to start cutting hair again. And she was like, what? And I said, how many people did you meet in your business from cutting hair? And she's like, oh, tons. Like at first, that's where I met everyone. And I said, have you ever thought about um, a conveyor belt and how a conveyor belt works? Well, that that 
that daily haircutting job or the gym or whatever it is, that's the conveyor belt that, that really stocked your business. And so you don't need to do it all the time, but I've, I've always encouraged people that have been successful that have a full-time job, like don't quit it. Like it does two things. One, it doesn't, it, it gives you the ability to make business decisions without having a fina a financial obligation. And you might be thinking, what, what does that mean? Um, here's what it means. It means that you can make a, a business decision of where you place someone or how you do a rank run, or if you uh, buy a whole bunch of inventory when it goes on sale to, to sample out, you can make those kinds of business decisions without worrying about, well, I need that thousand dollars to pay this, this, and this, right? And so those that's one of the reasons why um, you you want to make sure that you're in a good financial place. You're in a place where you're 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 finding people. Um, and if you have employment, then and you're finding people there, then I would I would encourage it. I mean, if if you're a a welder and you're out in the middle of nowhere, then maybe you want to quit that job, right? Just saying. If you're in a place where you're meeting and talking to people every day, I want you to seriously consider um, the opportunity cost that that's going to present to you, right? The opportunity cost is, hey, I get this, but I lose this or vice versa. So anyway, um, those are some things that I that I think you can focus on. Um, I call it business 101. These are things that we should always be doing. It's the basic um, dribbling, passing, blocking, tackling, um, swinging the bat, whatever sports analogy you want to use. Uh, this is stuff that you should be doing all the time. So anyway, Amber, I'm going to kick it back to you. And I'm, if you want to hit me with questions or something, um, well, I'm going to, um, I'm going to recap and I, my brain, I go backwards. So <laughs> we'll start with the last thing. Um, I love that touch on that, like hairdressers. And, and one thing is, and I don't know if you know this part of my story, but one thing is I definitely, I, I tell people one that don't, don't quit. You know, we've always said, don't quit your job too soon. Um, and I actually had never planned on leaving the salon, um, but the boys had, they were at the time, like just preteen age, right. And racing every weekend, um, this business was booming and I had pretty much put it off as long as I could. And, and really in, in prayer time, God was like, one of the three has to go and it couldn't be the kids <laughs> and it couldn't be thrive. And so it had to be the salon. Um, and I have actually thought about, I don't know that I want to go back to work as much as just getting back in and around people. Um, but something that anytime somebody can, they're, they'll always come and they'll say, oh, I want you to talk to my hairdresser. I, I'm telling her she can retire. I'm like, don't tell them that. One, no hairdresser wants to quit their job. Like mostly, at least, the, I, probably the 95% I know, they love what they do. You know, and so if you're coming at someone attacking what they do, they're not going to give you the time of day, whether it's hair or something else. Now, if they're coming at you and they're like, I hate my job. I hate being away from the kids. I hate this. I hate that. Then that's your opening, right? Your pain point of, hey, I've got something you should look at. You know what? It might, it won't happen overnight, but this is something that I've supplemented my income with this. Is, so you have that ability, but if, if you're meeting someone and they're talking about how they work and they don't sound upset about it, do not attack their job. Do not tell them, well, you could quit that. Look, why do I want to quit it? I love it. So, um, just, just remember that when you're coming into meeting somebody, talking to somebody, um, I will say in the getting out and about, for me, like looking back, we used to be out and about all the time. My two, probably more than that, but the two that come to mind, two of my longest standing customers have come from me meeting strangers out and about. One 
Uh, we met on a car rally when Jason and I used to do all these car rallies and we were on a daytime event and um, her husband also does the car thing. She and I met, what's that thing on your arm? You know, just like Jason was saying, wear your DFT loud and proud. Um, you're like, what's that thing on your arm? What does it do? Then we connected probably a month or so later and she's been a longstanding customer. She sent me a couple of referrals. She does not want to do the business. That's great. I love her as a customer. Um, I've got another one that I met through another stranger. I met a stranger on a plane. She was a customer, then invited me to a girl's trip. I ended up with five new customers on this girl's trip. One of those is a consistent order. The other few, you know, off and on. But one of those is one of my longest standing consistent ordering customers. And so I recently have been like, I think just with COVID, right? We got so used to shopping online, ordering groceries online. I don't order groceries online because I, I just have to be at the grocery store, but I shop on Amazon. I order everything online. And even my husband was like, why don't you go back out to the stores? Why don't you, you know, and I'm like, well, it's just easy to click the button. And then, you know, if it doesn't fit, I try it on in my own home. If it doesn't fit, I return it. But such a good reminder is we got to get out and about. We've got to meet these people that are out and about. And you just never know who's going to be that next person as you connect. And so I would challenge you, find groups in your area, find meetups. You know, Chastity talks all the time about doing events and community events and different things. I personally need some local girlfriends. Like I need things that I can go do during the day. So I've been looking into that. Like who goes where, who meets up when, and, and just connecting in person. Um, I will say, okay, so Jason on your find, when you said find your purpose, the thing that stood out to me is find your purpose daily, because all of this, your find list, it changes daily, right? Like it, it or monthly, yearly, whatever. Jason, how many kids do you have? Um, nine. Nine. <laughs> I really thought it was like five. Okay. So what are their age ranges? 27 to 17. Okay. So for me, like when I started this, my boys were eight and 11. My purpose with them is very different now that they're 18 and 21. And, and, and at one point I felt like it was, you know, got to like a little less hands-on. Well, now 21, I feel like I'm back to <laughs> trying and mothering and not mothering and all finding all the things, but your purpose changes daily. And, you know, is it a purpose with your family, a purpose in, you know, in what God's calling you that day in your faith? What is, is it purpose in, in you're needed at the house? Things change last minute. Um, and somebody had commented on here, um, when you were saying the A, B list, um, I had read a, a excerpt a couple of weeks ago about glass balls and plastic balls. And basically it's like, imagine your life as you're juggling all these balls and the, the glass balls are the most important, right? Those are the ones that you can't drop, but they change daily. Something that was a, a glass ball yesterday could be a plastic ball today. You know, um, is crazy sock day at school as important as a a project at home or the fact that you're you're water flooded or you know whatever? Like those things daily, those priorities, those things, and and the things on your list. And so I challenge you when you start every day, just remember it is a new day, and and I think that's sometimes hard um, to remember because it just you know, it's a new day. Start over today. Don't stress about what happened yesterday, what you didn't complete yesterday. Celebrate the wins, but then move on. Um, one of uh, Carson's trainers, he said one time, and, and he's trained like top pros and KTM and all the different things. And he said, um, he said, I give my riders 15 minutes he said, we, we can celebrate or we can be pissed off for 15 minutes, whatever it is. If you just won, 
you come off, you can celebrate that win for 15 minutes. But guess what? Starts over tomorrow. There's a, there's a new race next week and you got to get better because your competition is trying to beat you. So you can't live in the, well, I won the, this in 1997, you know, like, or I was taught PPA, uh, leaderboard in, you know, 2017 that you can't just live in the past. And so he said, same with, if it was a bad race, he's like, you are absolutely valid and allowed to be upset but it starts over. You've got 15 minutes, whether it's to celebrate or be upset. Um, I think Maria gives five minutes. <laughs> She's like, you have five minutes to get it out and then move on. Um, but every day, well, the brain can you imagine out. Amber, if, can you imagine if, if Jason Camper would have just celebrated the first product that was a success, mm -hmm. right? I yeah. mean, that that would be equi the equivalent of Tom Brady celebrating his first Super Bowl and then just being like, yeah, we got it from here. We'll get more, but I'm still celebrating the first, right? The The finding is it's absolutely something that you have to redo daily because you're right. There, there are things that change every day and it's like putting the rocks in the box, right? You start with the very biggest one the smaller ones, and then you pour the pebbles around and you can get everything in one. You can, you can get all the rocks in a box, right? So if you start with the little things and then try to add the big things, it just doesn't work. Absolutely. Um, and I will touch on too, when you said um, about scrolling, waste, you know, time suckers, time wasters, social media. So I will challenge you because Scrolling on social media should be a part of your job in finding new people. However, because now there's so much stimulation in our phones, right? Whether it's it's memes, it's videos, it's it just our brain can just sit there and just get sucked in. So I challenge you, set a timer. Set a timer with every single thing you do, um, whether it's 15 minutes to do reach outs, whether it's 15 minutes to send follow-up messages, whether, you know, five minutes, that, whatever it is, set a timer so that you don't get distracted. Because again, if you're not focused and you're not regimen of some sort, your 15 minutes can become two hours and you're like, whoa, how that happen? Um, so scrolling on social media to find new friends, to um, find your target audience, set that timer to do so. Because I will say, I've definitely found people at my last two newest customers were because they were talking about being tired in their post. And of course, we're friends. So I reached out. So don't not scroll, but don't allow the scroll to take over your life. And I think setting a timer is, is probably the best way to be able to do that. Um, let's see. I love when you said, what can I do? Well, I think I wrote this down from what you were saying. What can I do every day to be more effective? So guys, it's October 1st. Okay. Sit down, do your own self-assessment. What are you proud of from September? What did you do? What did you accomplish? Um, next section, what could you do better? What, what do you know? Yeah, I really didn't do that well. I didn't, I wasn't good enough at setting time. I wasn't, you know, just what, what about you that you could redo? Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't look at the, the leaderboards or anything. Just sit down and go, okay, here's what I did. Here's what I didn't do. Um, I will challenge you and my personals know this and those that work with me daily know this. Um, I will challenge you. It is October 1st. I want you to treat this week, this first part of the week or this first week of the month. I want you to treat this week as if it were the last week of the month. Because what we see is it's the last week of the month and everybody's like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to hit my rate. I'm not going to hit my goals. I need it. I need more customers. I need more of this. I need more of that. What if you were running with that same fire and same intensity this first week of the month? It's very similar to, so I ran track way back in the day in high school 
Um, I don't run now, um, but <laughs> but when I ran, I ran the mile, I ran the two mile. It was never, hey, start out at a slow pace and build up. It was, you start running, running. Like you give it your all because you're going to build up as you go. And even if you like just lose all your gas, you are still further ahead than if you were going slow and trying to get faster. And so like a, a mile is four laps on a track, right? If you start sprinting those first two, you'd be surprised how you can actually break your time. And it's the same concept here. Start running now. Don't wait. Don't go, oh, well, you know, it's only Monday. I've got a little bit, blah, blah, blah. Let's see what this GLP-1 is. No, like start now, reach out now, follow up now, focus with, um, go run your auto ship reports. Like Betty Shelton told us about last week, run your auto ship reports. Who has auto ships October 5th? Like reach out to them. Are they, are they hitting your 150 minimum for customer acquisitions or are you going after auto bonus elite? Are, are you just, Hey, Amber, yes. uh, just one, just one point to that. And that is when you think about how hard it is to go get another customer or another promoter, think of how much easier it is to save one that you already have. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, like think of it that way. When you're assessing the auto ships and what's coming up and what ran, if, if you take the approach and you think about it like, wow, um, there's four people that just dropped off that's the equivalent of finding four new people, right? And and the amount of effort that goes into that. And so um, if you, once again, take some time and prioritize that, you only need to do it a couple of times a month, but take 15 minutes and do that. I mean, that 15 minutes will pay huge dividends for you. Yes. Well, and then too, like um, going into starting at the beginning of the month with, who is currently ordering that needs referrals? They still don't have referrals. Um, you know, are, do you just need to change up your verbiage with them? Do they need help posting? Um, I have a girl that she was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody or I don't know who would want this. And um, she said, I'll make a post. Well, she never made a post. I mean, this was years ago, but I, I finally just wrote it up for her because I was like, all right, tell me what you like about Thrive. Tell me why you keep taking this. And, and so she told me, I, you know, just quick words, bullet points. I wrote up her story. I said, hey, does this sound like you? And she was like, yeah. I said, copy, paste it and tag me and go post it. And she got referrals from that. So Sometimes, you know, we say, oh, our people don't want to post. Well, it might be that they don't want to post because they just, they don't know what to write. They don't know what to say. So kind of ask them, hey, or and maybe you just need to post it and tag them with their permission, of course, but help them. They're not, they're not promoters. They're not salespeople. They're not, you know, they, they're terrified. <laughs> they're going to post something wrong. Um, so just kind of help in that way, but start now, not, oh, we got all month for you to work on getting it for free. No, like start now. Um, who knows how many referrals they could get, how many people they could introduce you to. They may introduce you to your next promoter. Like you just never know. Um, and in digging in, if you're on a, a bonus maintenance right now, knock your PPA out now, you know, what, no matter what happens, um, you could click that off now. Well, then as you keep going, now your momentum has forwarded you to where not only have you clicked off your PPA, but you actually hit the, the bonus requirement, right? The maintenance requirement. Um, Jason, have I left anything out for the month? <laughs> I mean, we're so excited about GLP-1 and, and all the things. And can, can you tell us, like, I know the call's tonight. After the call, like, are we, is the launch date in sight? Is it, is it really soon? Yeah, he, he, will, he will give that to you tonight, I believe. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's. 
I'm not going to give you any hints. Come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't. <laughs> but I will say this. Um, tomorrow at this time, you guys should know. Because the call's tonight. Okay. Okay. So the call's tonight. And then, all right. Okay. All right. I'll take that. That that makes my brain cross-eyed, but okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just, we're all excited. Obviously, new products are exciting, but this, this GLP-1 thing, it's obviously, it's the current buzzword. Yeah. Um, I, well, I'll tell you, just, I'll give you like the two minute elevator pitch of why Lavelle is superior to anything out there. Okay. Right. And, and you need to remember this. And this, this actually goes hand in hand with the message that Lavelle has had for since the beginning. What do we tell people about the thrive one, two, three experience? One of the main things that we talk about is the nutrition gap, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a three-step system. What, what would the results be if you took the protein shake away or if you took the DFT away or the caps away? It, it, it would dilute it, right? And so with GLP-1, all of the big pharma people, they're only giving you one of the three components you need to lose weight. I'm sorry, but they're only giving you one. They say nothing and they might say something about exercise, but exercise is, is one of the three. App appetite suppression is one of the three. And then your nutrition and your nutrition might be the very most important. And, you know, the doctor doesn't send you out with a grocery list to go pick up at, at HEB, right? or whatever grocery store it is you live by they don't they don't or, or you know they don't give you that and so so many people that are taking these shots are absolutely lacking the nutrition and so what happens it starts to break down and burn muscle when you know when the fat starts to get the the harder stuff won't come off and and because it's you know your body's hungry so it'll eat itself essentially so it's absolutely critical that we remember that weight loss there's three categories there's nutrition first and foremost and in in my personal opinion i believe that's the number one thing there's two sides to nutrition there's the junk that you shouldn't eat but then there's the essential good stuff that you do need to eat, mm -hmm. right? When your body does that, when your body is satiated with what it needs, it'll burn the fat. Number two, you need to have an appetite suppressant. You need to have a thermogenic that helps you stop with the cravings, particularly of the, the carbohydrates, right? Those are the things that we're going to store the quickest. And then the third part is, of course, the exercise and the, um, you know, burning. That's how we burn what we've stored. And so you, you have to remember that all of these companies that are selling GLP-1, they're selling one of the three components. No one is out there on Facebook saying, look at this new GLP-1 product. Isn't it awesome? But what I re where I really lost the weight was the stuff I bought at the grocery store and at Gold's Gym. They, they, they say nothing about the exercise nor the nutrition. They only are peddling one thing. The difference with Thrive, we will have the nutrition. We will backfill the component number one with component number two, right? So the two are going to work together. Now, we can't sell you um, exercise. That's something you're going to have to do yourself, right? We, we can't do that for you. But people that are successful with GLP-1 right now, I guarantee you they've had a really good diet and they've had really good exercise. So just know that information going in so you can manage expectations. The reason that our product line is superior is because we're checking more of the boxes.
And that, that's that's the whole Thrive One Two Three story right now, right? It two of the three weight loss boxes are checked with Thrive One Two Three. Most weight loss products, it's a one box. That's it. Right. So that's my two minutes. I don't know if I went over, but that's the pitch that you need to remember and that you need to talk to people about. Yeah. Well, and I think it's important too, like even with Thrive and then with moving into with the GLP-1, like it's always important to move your body. The older we get, the more important it becomes to move your body, right. even if that's just getting out and walking, even if that's doing stretches, um, you know, at home or whatever, um, because our body, you just, you have to keep moving. You have to keep moving your body. Um, that's going to help in weight loss as well, but it also just, it helps mental all the things. And so what you can do with this, with the exercise component of this is you can encourage the people that are thriving with you or whether it's the new product or current thrive, you can encourage them to do move your body challenges, right? You can encourage them like go walking, go do this, go do that. I actually have um, a girl in the Moto Mom group that she's starting a October health challenge. Um, she's just had like her fourth baby and she actually just started Thrive as well. Um, but she has, she's like, I'm going to do this. And she had got the information from somebody that's about the calorie counting, caloric deficit, which that drives me bananas. Um, but that plus walking plus water intake, um, and on, you know, and, and so I kind of jumped in there and I was like, okay, cause I just went through this, you know, in the past couple of years, it's not just about tracking your calories or your food intake. It's about watching what you eat and what it does to your body. Because as I've gotten older, there are foods that will blow me up and, um, and there are foods that, well, I will crave more of, and they're not good for me um, when I eat them. And so when I learned partnering my Thrive with a more cleaner lifestyle, now I still eat processed foods. I just don't eat as much processed foods. And, and I've seen a huge difference in my body in doing so. Um, and so I was able to kind of talk about that in this challenge. So I'm joining the challenge and there's several of us that are like, well, we're not counting calories, but we are tracking what we eat and tracking what works for our body. So, um, you know, can you encourage people to do that with you? Um, you know, just create a, get a group of people together, go walking in your neighborhood or just post and talk about how you're walking, move your body and ask your audience, how did you move your body today? Right? Because People, when people see things, it encourages them to do things and then they'll respond to you and, and oh, I, I moved my body by riding a bicycle today, or I walked today, or I did this today. And that starts the conversation. Well, guess what? Now you can check in on that person. How's it going? Do you have the nutrition? Da, 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 da. Um, okay. Uh, question. Let's see. Oh, is the day announced tonight? the pre-launch or the actual date that the products can be purchased. Can you tell us that? Is the pre-launch and the purchase date different? Is that what you're asking? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. The I think the pre-launch is. Yeah, it it is. The answer to that is yes. I'm <laughs> not going to give you any particulars, but yeah, okay. the answer to that is yes. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. I was like, you can tell your chat. You're like, should I say, should I not say? Um, if Stephanie were talking, she would try to get you to spill. Okay. Well, I appreciate you so very much for jumping on. Oh, do you want to say something else? I was just going to say Stephanie might try that, but she would not succeed. <laughs> All right. Thank you again um, for giving us your time. And I took so many notes, many nuggets. Um, I encourage all of you, gang, if again, those videos in September to remember to me, and if I'm saying this after being here 10 and a half years, they're gold. They, they are gold. They're great training. They're great to go back and just jog your memory or, oh, I didn't know that. I'm going to incorporate that. So get in there, look at the, watch the videos, do the tasks, get the files. Um, but again, it is October 1st. 
I'm challenging you to run. Run at the beginning of the month. Don't wait till the end. Because if you call me at the end of the month and you're just now starting to run, I'm going to say, where were you? <laughs> October 1st, okay? So there's my challenge right out. Get going, get set. Do not miss this call tonight. Um, message people. And Thank you. I we'll see you guys. It. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. You too. Bye.